Most people, when they start editing in DaVinci Resolve, they're doing things the slow way, by clicking through menus, hunting for tools, and wasting their own time. But with the right shortcuts, your speed skyrockets. So in this video, we're breaking down the super fundamental, basic, must-know shortcuts and editing functions that you'll end up using hundreds, if not thousands of times in every single project. So if you're ready to level up your editing, secure the cup, let's get into it. Now, before we just jump into the actual shortcuts, let's talk about something that most people overlook, customizing your shortcuts. Because if you're still using the default setup, you're probably making things harder on yourself. In the top left, under the DaVinci Resolve dropdown, there is a keyboard customization option. This opens up a panel with a few different sections. In the top right of this panel, you've got some built-in presets that are made for people coming from other software. So if you learned how to edit in Premiere Pro or Final Cut or something like that, you can use one of those presets to start with. Also in the top right, you've got the three dots dropdown for saving and importing custom presets. In the top section of the panel, you can click on any key or modifier and key combination to find out what it already does down in the active key panel. And if you use your keyboard to hit any key, it'll temporarily show you the same thing as well. Once you have something selected, if you hover over any specific command name, it'll tell you where you can find it on the right-hand side in the commands panel. Or if you click on it, it'll automatically navigate to that command. Here, you can also search for specific commands and by clicking on the empty box and then using your keyboard, you can assign whatever shortcut you want to to that command. Now, I specifically started with this because a lot of the shortcuts shortcuts that I'm about to show you aren't actually the default DaVinci Resolve shortcuts, but I use these functions so much that I wanted to map them to single keys that were in easy reach of my left hand, so I can keep my right hand over on a mouse and my left hand on a keyboard 90% of the time. First up, we've got the razor command. If you're still manually selecting the cut tool, you're doing way too much work, so let's fix that. I personally have this mapped to the B key. The default command for the B key is to change the tool to the blade edit mode tool, but I found that it was just way easier to keep the regular tool and use the razor function. The razor command functions in two different ways. Wherever your timeline playhead is, hitting this key will make a cut, but if you have a clip selected, it will only cut that clip. However, if you have no clip selected, it will cut every single clip on the timeline at that point. Both of which are super handy at different times. Sometimes you're just working on one clip, sometimes you're doing a little bit of timeline surgery. Have you ever deleted a clip and then had to manually drag everything over to fill the gap in? There's a shortcut that does all of that in one press, and once you start using it, you will never go back. This is called ripple delete, and I personally have this function mapped to the X key. Let's say we have a clip that we just cut on our timeline and we want to get rid of it. If we hit the backspace button, it will disappear and then we'll have this big gap so we've got to move everything over to fill the space. But with Ripple Delete, it'll automatically do all of that for you, rippling all of the following clips into place. Hit the shortcut, the clip you want gone is gone, and all the clips after will move in to fill the empty space. Here's a trick that makes cutting down your timeline so effortless instead of manually trimming clips and moving everything over. These two keys let you instantly trim and ripple everything into place. They're called the Trim Ripple Start to Playhead and Trim Ripple End to Playhead. I have these mapped to the Q and W keys respectively. First off though, to understand these better, it's important to know that there are functions called Trim Start and Trim End without the ripple part. These are command and the left or right square brackets. Wherever your cursor is, it's going to trim the clip all the way from that point to the start with trim start or all the way to the end of the clip with trim end. But I found that way more often than not, I actually wanted to add the ripple part of it in there too. So with my shortcut Q, it will trim the clip from the playhead to the start and then ripple everything over to fill the gap. And with my shortcut W, it'll trim the clip from the playhead 
to the end and then ripple everything over to fill that gap again. These are probably the most used keys ever on my personal keyboard, especially when I'm doing my first cut. I drag clips on the timeline, I hit Q for here's where I want the clip to start, and I hit W for here's where I want the clip to end, and then move on to the next one. Do you ever find that you need to quickly hide a clip or text layer or effect to see what's going on underneath it? Instead of messing around with the visibility settings, here's the one button shortcut that makes it effortless. This is called enable, and I have it personally set to the D key, but I think that may also be the default. If you've got multiple layers going on, whether that be video, text, effects, or anything like that, sometimes it's nice to be able to disable some of them and just see what's going on beneath them. Let's say you've got some text on top of a clip, but you wanna focus on some of the changes to that clip itself for a bit. You can highlight the text and hit D to disable it. Then once you've done what you need to do and you're ready to have it back on again, you just click it again and hit D and it'll toggle it back on. Timeline snapping can be a lifesaver until it gets really annoying. I use the S key to toggle the snapping mode and I think that may actually be the default key for that as well. Once you start to have lots of clips and layers and you're trying to move things around and get them just right, sometimes the fact that clips snap to each other, to markers and to the playhead can get a little annoying. So quickly tapping S will disable the snapping feature and then you can edit your clip however you need to without it constantly trying to snap to the next closest thing. You can see whether it's currently turned on or off by looking for the little magnet symbol in the tools. Most people don't realize that DaVinci Resolve has these two different editing modes and switching between them makes a huge difference in how you trim and adjust clips. I personally use H to move into the trim edit mode and V to move into normal edit mode, otherwise known as selection mode. But the magic of this isn't just the shortcut itself as much as it is about how the two different modes differ and how to use them, starting with the normal edit mode. In this mode, if you grab a clip and you move your cursor, you will move the clip back and forth on your timeline. And if you hover your cursor close to the edge of the clip, you'll get the trim icon and you can trim the start or end of the clip. However, if we hit that H shortcut to flip into trim edit mode, when I grab a clip and try to move it, instead of moving the clip, it actually keeps the clip in the same place, but it moves which part of the clip I'm using, like which part of the original video file. So let's say for example, I have a clip where there's a large noise and I want to line up that noise right at the start of the clip. But right now it's somewhere in the middle of the clip as we can see on our audio track. I'm going to hit H to go into to trim edit mode and then drag the clip over and we can see the overlay letting me know how many frames I'm shifting it. And also in the viewer, it'll show me my new start and end frames. This is a super handy feature for getting the timing of a clip just right. And when we're in the trim edit mode, trimming the edges of a clip reacts a bit differently now too. So if we hover near the edge of a clip, we'll see that trim icon again, but when we actually do it, it'll trim, but it'll also rip so instead of just leaving an empty gap, it'll move everything over as you trim the edges. Sometimes in an edit, even moving a clip one frame makes all the difference in the world. But instead of using the mouse and guessing whether you got it right, use these two keys and nudge your edits with frame perfect precision. We've got the one frame left and one frame right keys, which are the comma and period respectively. But I like to think of them as the little arrows that show me which way I'm moving things. These work the same way as the mouse does, but just one frame at a time. So if I'm in the normal edit mode and I select a clip, I can move it earlier or later by one frame at a time. Also, if I click near the edge of the clip to highlight the clip boundary, I can trim one frame at a time. Similarly, if I'm in trim edit mode, these buttons will shift the clip within itself like we saw with the mouse earlier, but one frame at a time. And the same thing with the edges. We can trim one frame at a time with the ripple included as well. So those are the fundamental shortcuts and functions that I use 
constantly in DaVinci Resolve. And once you get these into your muscle memory, your editing speed is going to go through the roof. A quick reminder, some of these shortcuts aren't the default, so feel free to customize them however works best for you. Or if you wanna skip the setup altogether, you can download my preset from the description below. And if even one of these shortcuts is gonna save you time, do me a favor, go down there, hit the like button, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. And if you wanna go even deeper into DaVinci Resolve, I've got a whole bunch more videos just waiting for you right here somewhere. You can click and watch. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.